So welcome back to the sawmill, friends. It looks like we're gonna have another hot day here in Tennessee. It's August the 9th, my goodness. Time is flying by, I tell you what. This has been the fastest year that I can recall. It's just flying by, it goes by so fast. And summer has just flown by. Bruno started school this week. He's in middle school this year. He's in sixth grade, I can't believe it. But we got a lot going on today, friends. We got our tripods ready, got plenty of cameras, got a lot of batteries. And I've got a pretty ambitious goal for today to get a lot done. But the first thing we need to do is get the track loader, go grab a pallet, because we're gonna saw it some cherry. You guys hang in there. And this hot summer we've been having has turned into a wet summer. The weatherman says, who's always right, you know how that is, we're supposed to get another inch of rain tomorrow. And for you guys new to the channel, this is my Kato track loader, 65 horsepower Kubota engine. And it is my new favorite tool. I find myself using this machine a lot more and using the tractors a lot less. So before we do anything, the LT70 needs a new blade. The other one's pretty dull. Now, even though this blade is dull, it will still cut you. And I'm not too proud to tell you, these blades actually scare me to death. I'll tell you what. They'll get you before you know it. Now here's something that might be interesting for you guys and it may help some people in the future. This is the idle side of the sawmill. The blade does ride on this wheel. That's pretty obvious right there. The other wheel is actually hooked to the drive belt. That's where the power comes from. But something you may not realize is there's a belt inside of this wheel. Let me show you. So right here inside of this wheel, you can see the belt. I pulled it out right there. There's a groove inside this wheel that's milled in there for the belt to ride on. So the first time you start sawing on your new wood miser and you see this belt hanging loose, that's the way it's supposed to be. Now I've had four different wood misers. I started with a 28, then I went to a 35, a 40, now the Super 70. And on all those four sawmills, the belt design was just like this. The blade -o wheels right here were different size, of course. This is the biggest one I've ever had. I don't think they make a bigger one than the 70. But all the belts rode loose on those wheels. And as far as like the LT-15 goes and those smaller manual mills, I'm not sure. Maybe somebody in the comments will let us know, but I would bet it's probably the same way. And something else I like to do every time I change the blade, and some guys do this every 50 hours, maybe every 100 hours. I'm not sure what the manual calls for, but it doesn't hurt to do it more often than it says. I switch these different belts on the wheels every time I change the blade. So every blade change, I take the belt off, I go to the drive side, I take that belt to the idle side. I think they wear better if you do that. So something else I like to do here, friends, as far as maintenance goes, and this is another good reason to switch these belts over because it makes you check this every time you put a new blade on. And if you do have something in this groove, it will cause you some problems while you're sawing. As I take my finger with a glove, I put it in that little channel, rotate the wheel, and I check for any kind of debris, any sawdust buildup or any bark or anything that's gonna be built up in there because that will affect your sawing more than you think. So always do that, guys. That's a good reason. I think everybody should switch their belts over on every blade change because it makes you check that channel right there on the wheel. Come over here on the drive side. I'll do the same thing. Take off the belt. Check that same groove right there. 
for any foreign material. And this is also a good time as well to check out your belts and make sure they're good to go. And if there's any buildup on them, you can put those on a wire wheel or manually clean them off. That looks pretty good today. So first up on the sawmill, friends, I need to edge these cherry boards. Got some sap wood I need to get rid of. Got a few more out there. And then we'll move on to these two cherries right here. This is kind of a low grade log. We'll knock it out pretty fast. And this one right here has potential to be decent. We'll see how it goes.
All right, friends, unlike that first log, this one might be worth our time to take a look at. A little over nine feet in length. I may trim that down a few inches so it matches the rest of the stack over there. I didn't center it up too good. I wish I would have got it about 18 inches more toward the saw head right here, but I wasn't paying attention. And there's a little bit of taper. I could see that when we was loading it up. So I went ahead and raised up this tow board down here to bring up this far side. As far as the diameter goes on the operator's side, we're looking at about almost 19 inches. Then down here on the other end, about uh, just about the same, but there is a little bit of a swell right there in the middle that caused that taper down here. Not too bad, but there is a little bit of one. This is a customer log. We'll be sawing this into four quarter, an inch and an eighth on the thickness. We're gonna grade saw it, get rid of the pith, get rid of most of the sapwood. I don't know if you guys noticed on that first log, three or four boards had live edges on them. And the reason I didn't try to edge off the uh, sapwood is because the worst face had so much sapwood. If I'd done that, it would've took those boards that have turned into one by twos probably. So I'll keep a watch on those after drying. They may get cold. I don't know, I'll have to see what happens. But sometimes you have to leave that on there with cherry or you're left with nothing pretty much. This one right here, we should see some decent boards. I don't see any cat faces, any defects. The bark is missing in some places right here, but that's probably when it was drug through the forest because these were harvested with an excavator and uh, other than that, it should be a decent log. A few quick things here, guys, and we'll get started. On the sawmill, we've got a Joe Main Silver Tip Turbo 7. And also, this is August of 2023, so if you're watching this video in the future, it's not going to matter. Woodmiser is doing 15% off and free shipping on double hard blades this month. So you guys that like double hards, there's your chance to save some money. And lastly, friends, I have decided to go to the Paul Bunyan Show again this year. It's in October and I can't remember the dates. I'll leave a thing right here saying what dates it is. And there's websites and they have a Facebook page and all that stuff if you need directions. I'll be there on Friday and Saturday around the Woodmiser tent. The Woodmiser tent is usually right beside Log Right, so you'll find me in that area for those two days. If I'm not there, I'm probably either taking a break or going out for lunch, so just hang out and I'll be back but I'll be there Friday and Saturday. Saturday, I might leave early just so I can get back home at a decent hour, and I won't be there at all, of course, Sunday. So if you want to catch me there Friday or Saturday, that's the Paul Bunyan show this year. It's a really good show. I've been for the past two years. I met a lot of great people there. So if you live close to that area, come on out and see me. And Woodmiser's gonna have a few surprises there. So uh, it may be worth your time to come check them out. I'm looking forward to seeing them myself. So the Paul Bunyan Show this year, 2023, there's the dates. I'll see you guys there.
right, guys, we're not done yet for the day. I got a few more things left to do. We've had a lot of rain here lately and the main driveway coming up to the farm is pretty washed out in a few places. So we'll jump in the 754. It's already got the land plane on it. And you go over that a few times and kind of smooth it out. I just looked at the forecast. We're supposed to get a lot of rain tomorrow. So it'll probably just make another mess, but I gotta keep fighting it at least. I can't let it win. So we'll get that done. I got some material in the back of the truck I need to unload to take down to the shop. And then I'm gonna grab the anvil that I've been talking about here for the past few videos. Don't go anywhere. and tail but that metal had a lot of water on it got me good All right, friends, here is the anvil I've been talking about for the past few videos. It's a Peter Wright, and judging by the numbers right there on the front, I'm pretty sure it weighs right at, or it's supposed to weigh 104 pounds. It's in pretty good shape. The anvil horn right there, a friend of mine told me it needs sharpened just a little. I need to look into that. The edges aren't too bad. This anvil came to me locally, and there's a story behind it, and I'll share that in the next video. But right now we're gonna take it down to the shop and get it ready for a proper cleanup and restoration. That'll be the next video. But I just want to clean off the front of it today, guys, so you all could see the stamp right there. I hope that comes through the camera. It says Peter Wright patent solid route or solid rot rather for wrought iron, excuse me. And the numbers we have zero, three and 20. And there's a code that goes with those numbers that tells you how much the anvil weighs. I'll talk about that in the next video. So there it is, friends. 
really looking forward to putting this thing to work. And I have another anvil, a mouse hole, but this one is in better shape. Something else I was wanting to do is the ball bearing test. I did this before I got the rust off the face of it and it bounced decent, but not really what I was wanting to see. So hopefully with this rust pretty much uh, cleared off the top of it, look over the background noise, these chickens are fighting each other. So now with the rust kind of cleaned off the face, it should bounce a lot better. This is a ball bearing. And if you're new to this method, this is how you test the hardness of an anvil. You drop a ball bearing and see how far it bounces up from where you drop it from. I think you want maybe 80% rebound, if I remember right. I did so much research, I can't remember. Oh yeah, that's a whole lot better before. I tell you, when I brought this home, I think I got this about a year ago, I did the same test and it had a lot of rust on the face and it, it didn't do so well. It was a whole lot better now. Oh yeah. There's a way you can measure this but I'm not that critical. As long as it bounces pretty good, I'm happy. And judging by what I'm seeing, I'm happy. All right, friends, I think I'm done for the day. I've been out here all day. And what time is it? Gosh, it's almost 7.30. I've not even had dinner yet. So I'm gonna take the anvil down to the timber frame and store it for the night. We'll come out here tomorrow and finish the cleanup on the anvil, put some more things together down at the shop and hopefully light up that forge. So I appreciate everybody watching and don't forget to hit that thumbs up button right there because it helps these videos. It don't cost you nothing. You guys have a good one. We'll see you back here tomorrow.